However, this friendly, this is a disaster animation that I have made for quite a long time. People ask for a tutorial and it's today's topics. Be aware that for this particular part, I'm not going to focus on too much on Metaflow smoke. I also think there are a lot of useful tutorials about Metaflow, so I may not want to address too many questions about it here. For this part, I essentially focus on animation nodes, so let's start. Here we're in Blender and I've already made a cube and a scale that's so very weirdly. I put a kind of brick texture, let's name it as a brick. And this texture is basically just a pool from the cc0.com. And uh, I have a lot of different... I'm not an expert in shaders, so don't ask me if I made any mistakes. Uh, I'm going to put that to 15. So if I made any mistakes, just uh, don't quote on me. But I just put the colors, ambient occlusion, roughness, and normal to your relatively sockets. And this is rendered in EV. Uh, important thing is I basically scale that up. Actually, in point mode, it's basically down, so that it goes up. I mean, it has the texture has been scaled up, so that now we have a brick. Uh, but you can also self-made whatever textures, but just to make it a more kind of brick. And you can also add a bevel modifier and make it kind of edge smoother. And basically, this is the preparation phase where we complete it and we are going to go through the animation node and do the instancing and the rest of parts of animation. For simplicity, I'm just going to make a kind of road. Uh, instead of using the array modifier, actually, we are not supposed to use array modifier. I'm just going to use the distributed matrices. Uh, by the way, um, if you ever try to wonder why do I, don't I use particle system and the physics, I would say if you try to use the force field, you can try by yourself, but it works very, very badly. So it's something that I just don't like, and it, you, you have very, it's very hard to actually control. So I'm not going to use them. And that's the, print, that's the reason that why I use the animation node instead. And um, object instancer, distributed matrices is basically just to generate a grid in this case and object matrix output. So I'm going to instance the amount of objects according to the size of the grid. And I'll assign all these objects to the grid. And I'm going to copy four objects so that it copies the modifier. So if I do not copy four objects, it will do not copy the modifier. And if I make a deep copy, then all the mesh data will be copied. Uh, these are information that has been explained in my instancing tutorials. I'm not going to too deep to that about the difference between these two options. Also, you can read the menus if you're not sure about all this information. And basically, just uh, increase the instances. I'm going to change the size to step so that they have a consistent interval instead of me worrying about many, many other stuff. And just to increase its size. The next step that we're going to do is to put some of the bricks up to the sky. And I'm going to use a node which is called offset matrices node. Just to plug that in, put the locations up. And here, just uh, going to show you what, ha what happened. If I put this Z up, and all the bricks will go up. And if we turn this fourth down to zero, then you can see this effect will be cancelled. Uh, it's also possible that you put this fourth manually to negative one. So it goes to the opposite direction. So even normally, if it seems like the fourth can only go between zero and one, but it's actually possible that you type a very large value and it will just go beyond the scale proportionally to the translation that you designed. And this is basically idea. However, this is the, now the question is, okay, everything has been transformed up, but I don't like it. What, how should I actually fix this kind of issue? Okay, I'm going to control it by control this fourth and restrict it to a specific region. So here, what I'm going to do is put this controller. This controller is just empty, so let's delete that. Okay, I'm going to select this collection and add an empty. It does not necessarily be an empty, it can also be any kind of empty. It's just uh, for your visualization and you probably don't want to see that in render. So empty is always the best choice for to control such a kind of things. 
Uh, another thing you do realize we have our original brick. It's possible you just disable this collection, or it's possible that you disable this screen. Um, personally speaking, I have reasons, so I usually just disable the collection so that I do not see that in the render. But I do see all these child uh, instances all the time. Okay, I'm going to use this fault. How can I actually control this uh, link these empties to the fault? I'm going to use another which is object controller fault and select this object or empty which is named as a controller. And immediately you can see kind of the effect only when all these kind of matrices. So let's hit control A and search for 3D viewer. And you can see only when all these objects is within the region of a fourth, then they will be transformed up. As you can see, the matrices has been goes up before and after. And this is the trick of fourth. If you would like to have a soft transition, because you can see now the transition is very sharp, then you can actually increase the fourth width so that it give a kind of more smoothness kind of whatever stuff. You can also change the type to directional. I think in this particular case, I'm going to change the directional, but just also be realized, uh, also to realize the direction of the fourth. And in this case, you can see you no longer have the fourth width, but the good part is you just scale your object, then the fourth width will actually be increased. Okay. Another thing you realize, um, if you, this is your first time to actually, um, use animation nodes, you probably don't real, uh, you probably move this control, it will not actually work to change this node tree. The reason is that if you hit M panels, go to node tree and look at this auto execution, you can see the always. If you turn on the always, it will actually execute the node tree all the times by maybe five seconds, four seconds, whatever. And even if I just go away from the keyboard, and drink a cup of coffee, you can see this number is still going and it's completely waste of your power. So I always turn this always down. Instead of I turn the rest instead. Um, and, um, but in this case, all these options actually does not include the transformation data of my object. So now if I try to move my object, okay, disable this whatever stuff, and I move my object and it does not update the node tree at all. So I have to use a kind of, it's, all, it's called a trigger. And you just select either object or collection and select the collection, which is called a control. It can also be named whatever things, who cares. But and the typing, location, scale, rotation, order. The order does not really matter, but it basically means location, scale, rotation, order. And it's basically idea. So that's now, even if, uh, so now with these triggers, I can use the transform data to update, to execute the node tree. So that's, I can just move my fourth easily and I can see the updates in real time. So this is one part. Uh, I'm going to turn on this translation to very high so that I no longer see them. I'm going to turn on the random rotations for all these objects. So what to do is I'm going to probably turn on a random ULA because rotation is a ULA number. So usually translation is a vector, a uh, combined vector. So normally all these translation are vector and the scale are also vectors. But the rotation are different. Rotation are called the ULA number because it contains a unit of either radius or degree. In this particular case, you see the degree. But if you turn on the random ruler, it's actually using the radius. So sometimes you have to convert all these kind of unit by yourself. And if you hit this button, it becomes a list. You put a you put the ruler into rotations. And I'm going to use this get list length so that to create as many random rulers for them. And if I just hit a pi, actually two pi. 2 pi is a 360 degree, then it becomes, it has a random rotation of 360 degree. Personally speaking, I don't like it. I probably don't want to put that too high. So just a little bit. Or it maybe don't care. Maybe just a 200, 360 degree. And this is kind of 
basic idea. And then you just keyframe this controller and you get all the animation done. However, uh, it's actually not, this is not a good animation yet. So we are going to work with other things to make this kind of animation nicer. But this is the, basically the principle. Okay. Animation-wise, I would like to generate kind of preparation phase. So even now we have kind of evolved from the nothing to the going up, but it is, does still not feel the, a kind of propagation of the wave. And in this case, what we need to actually do is just to duplicate these offset matrices and put that upstream to the original one. Why it has to be upstream? Because in this time, I'm not going to change anything about the translation. I'm only going to change its rotation. Okay. So that it gives kind of, how shall I say? So that the wave is not yet, so it shows that, that the wave is not yet strong enough to actually making everything goes up. It's kind of case. It's more kind of wave instead of actual um, collision or force that's making the grid fly to the sky, something like that. And we can add a random OODA. And the good part of this kind of random OODA is that um, you just duplicate a node and it has a node seed attached to them and it will change all the time. So even if you do not, ch even if they have the same seed, but the node seed will be different. Not all nodes actually have this node seed option. Sometimes you have to be aware these kind of change. And then I'm going to duplicate. So I have the second fourth. Let's name as a preparation. And the other as absolute. So this preparation can be the same size. It does not really matter. But uh, I think it must be. Um, it must be it must be in front of the original one and i'm going to duplicate this fourth controller select our preparation put the fourth into fourth so now you can see there's a difference and in this case i'm not going to make it 360 degrees just add a pi actually a little bit smaller And if I just parent them together, so the absolute will actually dry. So now I can see the kind of the, the move. And basically this is kind of idea. And be aware that the length will go into count. So that it generates, It generates a random ruler for each bricks. So if you only keep that to five, then this five rotation will be repeated throughout. That's why you can actually see kind of repeated patterns. So you put this lens into the count here, which is very important. So this is kind of it. At some point, this is actually all about it. It's also possible that, so now we're actually using random ruler for a lot of times, but it's actually possible that you use the vector wiggle or ruler wiggle series. The main difference between the random series of nodes instead of wiggle series of node is that in wiggle series of node, you do have this evolution so that you can animate them. In random series, you don't, you cannot really animate them. You can only change the scale or change the seed. But if you change the seed, then it becomes a completely different rotation for all everything. Then sometimes it's not good for animation, but the evolution will be everything will be very smooth. Also, another thing is that uh, you have ability to change the amplitude separately, which is also a kind of advantage. In this particular case, it's possible that you put the vector into translation, but to keep the original up face uh, flying, 
you probably would like to add a vector math so that you add the vectors together so I'm going to put the length into the count vector into vector and set that to 25 so now you get actually kind of randomness in these kind of bricks over the time and it's possible that you try to evolve them um, it does not really matter or you can completely forget about this vector wiggle it's also possible and this is basically a static frame one thing I would like to mention at the last, which is actually probably kind of critical. So if now I turn on the the, 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 the preview, uh, you can see it's actually a tithing of bricks. So if I move the fourth, so when everything is in motion, if you put the motion blurs by whatever means, whether it's uh, in AE or you use an add-on, which is actually called uh, the EV motion blur, whichever way you actually do, um, it will probably be fine. But uh, when the wave does not actually reach your break yet, then it's actually a tiled ground and you may not like it. So we're going to use a very simple way to, to fix that. So turn on, go to the shaders. Uh, this is probably the easiest method. The reason I use this instance method to instance everything as an individual object because I want to hit Shift A and take the object info. And I get this random. If I, It's possible that you directly plug this random to the location and it generates something very weird because I suppose um, all X, Y, Z will get a random number or the same random number, it does not really matter. But it's I personally don't like this. If it also depends on your texture, because my texture is essentially enlarged brick texture, so it, it has kind of connections in between. But you may not like it. In this case, there are other ways to fix that. For example, combine X Y Z. I think this is probably the easiest method that I would say. And so that every when the randoms goes to X then it will only move according to the X because if you move according to Y then you can see how everything works if you really think about their relationship to the UV editing then you will probably actually understand about how things actually works in such a case but it's not topic here so I'm going to turn that on I uh, turn that off and I'm um, yeah change Z value won't really affect anything because UV map is a 2D so you only have X and Y what if I would like to change the random seed for example I don't like this random seed there is a method that you just take a white noise and since blender I think blender 2.81 or blender 2.82 I think of since blender 2.81 you start to have these 4D options then you have a W. Uh, I'm actually not quite sure about how W actually works, but I think it's a way to change the random seed. So in the past, you probably need to use whatever crazy method to change the random seed, but now it becomes much, much easier. And you just change that. But uh, to keep this combined XYZ is kind of important. Otherwise, if you change the value on Y, it becomes very weird again. So, this is basically the final tip. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.